Hey everyone, Josh Hennick here, and I'm trying to start a new video series, in part inspired by a buddy of mine who's been trying to push me to be more social media active. So we'll see how this uh, series goes. This is the first episode of a series of just what is on my mind and me just explaining stuff, whether it's sports, comic book movies, anything in the life of the world that's in my mind. So I decided to come out for a walk, get some fresh air, kind of like clear my head a little bit before I sat down and had this conversation. So I want to get into why Robert Downey Jr. makes sense to be Dr. Doom in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because there's a lot of people who are like, how can Iron Man be somebody else? I think that is, that's the inherent flaw to this conversation. Marvel has already established that multiple people can play multiple characters. You've already seen that with Chris Evans playing Johnny Storm and Captain America. You have seen three different Spider-Men all on the same movie at the same time. We have already seen different variations of characters over time. I mean, for goodness sake, they recast Colonel Rhodes from Iron Man 1 to Iron Man 2. So there's a double standard here. It's because Robert Downey Jr. is beloved. It's because his portrayal of Tony Stark and Iron Man was iconic. And people are uncomfortable with the idea of this type of risk. But at the end of the day, it wasn't my favorite idea. I personally thought they should have recast Kang and continue with the Kang legacy and saga, but they thought it was important to go in a different direction. Let's be realistic. The COVID pandemic was a horrible, bad beat for Marvel because they had all these plans after Endgame for all these projects and all these films and all of these stories and they've had to either rewrite, cancel, rework, rehire. They had to do all kinds of stuff because of COVID. So then, what does Marvel do after that? Well, Marvel tried to go down the road they were going. And the road they were going led them to firing Victoria Alonso. For those who don't know, Victoria Alonso was one of the main three at the beginning when the Marvel Cinematic Universe first began almost 20 years ago. She was basically in charge of post-production, post-visual effects, post-editing. That was kind of her domain. Whereas Kevin Feige, who's like the face of Marvel Studios, his role was always more of a overseeing, like a, like a head coach of a football team. And like Victoria Alonso was like the defensive coordinator and Luis Esposito was the offensive coordinator. And then under them would be the players who are like the directors and the actors and so on and so forth. So you think about like a football team. That's kind of how it works. But ultimately, it, it was the trio of Feige, Esposito, and Victoria Alonso who were in charge of everything. But they fired Victoria because of the fact that she was... I'm just going to say it, and then people can judge me for it. Because again, this is my vlog. This is me talking to you guys. She was an idiot. She tried to shove her personal political ideology into these movies. And one of the problems is in today's world, people don't care about your politics when it comes to entertainment. They don't care if the, who the actor's favorite politician is. They don't care who they're voting for. They don't, they don't want you to tell them how to think, how to vote. People treat sports they treat movies they treat tv shows as escapism they don't want to be preached to in terms of explicit political or socio-political agendas and because victoria alonzo was herself a lesbian woman who had specific political beliefs and leanings she was trying to insert that more and more into marvel and she was doing work post-production that was not agreed to by Kevin Feige, Louis Esposito, or her, or the directors, or anybody before she started doing certain edits. And th it's, a, it's a whole fiasco of stuff. It's, it's way more than that, actually, but that's kind of like the genesis of what was the beginning of the end for her. So in the aftermath of her being 
sent out the door, shoved out of here. Kevin Feige's having to recalibrate because he's realizing that Ant-Man Quantum Mania didn't do as well as they'd hoped. The Marvels was a box office failure. And that was partly Marvel's fault because Marvel should have never released a movie with three actresses who would have been amazing on a press junket, who would have been amazing at promoting the movie. They released a movie when the actors were still on strike, when the writers were still on strike. Stupid move by Marvel. It's their own fault. The movie was actually good. So now they're leaning into a completely new direction. Not completely new, but a, a generally new direction when it comes to what they're involved right now, which is the multiverse saga. They are having the course correct. They were driving down the road, their car broke down, and they realized they need a new car. But because now they have a new vehicle, now they have to, you know, make up for spare time. So they said, all right, what is the quickest way we can get back into people's good graces? And that's a huge reason why Deadpool and Wolverine came out this summer and no other Marvel movie. Because what Marvel is saying is, look, we know Deadpool's popular, we know Wolverine's popular. If you bring them into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and let them be the catalyst to bring the fans back, we can have a winning product. Well, it's already paid off. They are having one of the top five largest box office weekends, not just COVID, since COVID, but for any superhero movie of all time and for any R-rated movie of all time. The movie is probably going to break a gazillion records. So now Marvel has to capitalize. And that's why at Comic-Con, they came out with the announcement where Robert Downey Jr. dressed as Dr. Doom, walks onto the stage, takes off the hood, takes off the mask, and reveals that it's him. And this is a genius move, in my opinion, by Marvel. Not because I agree with it. I don't think Dr. Doom should have been the villain of the MCU. I always thought they should have continued with Kang variant. They should have hired another actor to be Kang. They should have told the new actor, look, you are going to be the more evil version of King, Kang or more maniacal or more devious. And there's kind of the actors that, that were rumored to be in that conversation. But they decided that because they really want to continue down the Secret Wars path, Marvel, for whatever reason, really, really, really wants to do a soft reset after 2026 and 2027. Now, and part of it is because of the fact that, let's be realistic, the, the heart of the Infinity Saga, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, um, Scarlett Johansson, they're all getting older, and they're all not going to want to do these movies forever. Chadwick Boseman was a huge blow, his death, to Marvel. Marvel was literally planning their entire future around him. He was going to be the centerpiece of the Avengers moving forward. And there's been a hot and cold response to Letitia Wright uh, being Black Panther. Um, there's a lot of controversy around it because of her personal political beliefs. Um, you know, she was someone who was very vocal about not taking um, the shot. She was someone who was uh, very vocal about her Christian faith. So she's created a polarizing element where it should have been celebrated by the majority of people that a woman got to be this amazing, powerful superhero who's super intelligent and smart and everything she is has nothing to do with her aesthetic, right? You know, we, we and I mean people in my generation, people between the ages of like 35 and 55, we were always told, well, you need to respect women for who they are, not just how they look, right? Well, Letitia Wright is Lily played a character who what makes her great is not her look. Not that she's ugly, because she's definitely not. But it's the idea that she's super intelligent, she's a super genius, she is powerful, capable woman. And the general society didn't embrace that because there's a group of people out there who look at her and they say, well, your beliefs are too controversial for us. So they wouldn't embrace the character. So now we're here. And the idea being that they're going to use Robert Downey Jr., who's going to, uh, according to reports, be the centerpiece, Dr. Doom, moving forward. The This era's version of Thanos, which was supposed to be Kang, but now it's Thanos. 
So right now it's Dr. Doom instead of Thanos. And first of all, you're not going to see Robert Downey Jr.'s face almost ever. Because he's going to be behind the mask, behind the suit, behind some sort of CGI contraption. Because you never see Dr. Doom's face. That's like a no-no. <laughs> in, um, in, uh, in comics, that's, he, he's almost never been seen physically. There's only a couple times because of the horrible accident that mutilated his face. And number two, this is a great opportunity for Robert Downey Jr. to kind of flex his own acting muscles in that he can turn around and say, I can be the good guy, I can be the bad guy. And because I've been the good guy, I know how to be a really good bad guy in this environment. So that's where it's smart. The other part of it is, so for those who haven't read Marvel Comics, there is a comic story arc called Secret Wars where Doctor Doom, in an effort to save the multiverse, because the multiverse is collapsing in on itself, he steals the power of a race called the Beyonders and basically becomes Doom God. He is basically imbued with this God-level power of like over all matter and substance and reality. And he creates this environment, which is a amalgamation of the remains of the, of the different multiverses into one massive planet. He just rules over the entire planet. And in the comics, it takes a certain group of heroes who band together to overthrow him. But because in his effort to salvage the multiverse, there is no more universe, the heroes then turn around and specifically the Fantastic Four, Reed Richards, Sue Storm, and the whole Fantastic Four family, they get together and they use this godlike power that Doom had obtained to recreate the Marvel Universe. And in the comics, that's how, for example, for years, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, was in a different universe than everybody else. Now he's in the same Marvel Universe. So this is a way for Marvel Studios now, on the flip side, to say, okay, we are going to take the X-Men. We are going to take the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're going to take all these characters that you love, from the TV shows and the movies. We are going to finally put them in the one universe. But because we're doing this soft reset, we can now recast some of these characters. We can now retell some of these stories. And instead of having it for a haphazard reason, like Spider-Man, right? Spider-Man was just, well, they just kept a new actor and a new actor and a new actor. They never really explained why there were three different Spider-Men. Just, well, there's three different universes with three different Spider-Men. No, they're not going to do that anymore. They're going to get rid of the multiverse once and for all by bringing all of your favorite characters together. Because now Wolverine and Deadpool are going to be in the upcoming Avengers movies. Now Shang-Chi is going to meet all these people. And Shuri is going to meet all these people. And they're all going to come together and have to stop Doctor Doom. That's why they're doing this. The why is always important. Because I understand in society we react to stuff. We get emotional. We get attached to the idea of Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. Chris Evans is Captain America. And then whoever your favorite Spider-Man is. Um, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, right? But they're bringing your favorite characters together. Not just for a, a better story, because they're bringing back the Russo brothers. The Russo brothers directed... Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. He also directed, arguably, one of the greatest Marvel movies of all time, Captain America Winter Soldier. So you're bringing in two men who have a history of incredible success with these characters, with these stories, and now they can take those characters and build something bigger and better and not just to end the multiverse saga, but to reset, a soft reset of the MCU because now... After 2027, Marvel can say, we are going to now enter a new era of Marvel Studios. We are now going to enter with potentially new actors. You know, spoiler alert, one of the Wolverine variants in the Deadpool movie is Henry Cavill. He plays a Wolverine variant who decides not to help Deadpool. But he is a Wolverine variant. So they're already kind of like massaging your mind into the idea that other actors could be these characters. Because guess what? Hugh Jackman is getting older. He's not going to want to do this role forever. He only came back because he, him and Ryan Reynolds were best friends. He didn't come back um, 
because he desperately needed a paycheck or something. So that is the larger reason why Robert Downey Jr. is going to be Dr. Doom. I'll get into future videos about why my, my personal opinion about what direction they're going in more with the upcoming movies. I'm also going to do a separate movie about explaining Deadpool Wolverine because there is so much in that movie. And I'm also going to get into, in an upcoming video, why an R-rated movie was Marvel's only solution moving forward. But this movie was more so about how we got to this point with Robert Downey Jr. being cast as Doctor Doom, why Doctor Doom is the villain moving forward, and listen, Avengers Doomsday is going to lead right into Avengers Secret Wars, and it's going to be wild. It's going to be nuts. And Marvel has already laid the groundwork for a lot of what you're going to see moving forward. And I understand for some people, you may be only people who watch movies. You never read comics. You watch some of the TV shows, not all the TV shows. I think moving forward, Marvel is learning on the fly what they can and can't do, what they can and can't get away with, with the audience. So I think that you are seeing that with Deadpool and Wolverine, that people are accepting of it. They're welcoming it. They're embracing it. And I think that that will lead to better Marvel projects moving forward because what made Marvel great originally was creative, creativity. John Favreau with Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2. It was Kenneth Branagh with the first Thor movie. Joss Whedon with the first two Avengers movies. The Russo brothers with Captain America Winter Soldier. It was James Gunn with the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. They brought in people who are naturally creative minds to herald these projects. They're getting back to that. And that's a bigger key than even Robert Downey Jr. coming back. Because Downey Jr. is not coming back if it was some schlep writing the script or directing these movies. So, Josh Hennig here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe. And like I said, I'm going to be doing more of these videos moving forward. Just sitting down, thoughts I have about life, about the world, about comic book movies, TV shows, sports, anything. Anything that's on my mind, you're going to get it right here on my YouTube channel, at Josh Hennig. Thanks for watching. Like I said, if this goes well, if this takes off, I'm going to give my buddy credit. If it doesn't, I'm going to take the blame. Because you know what? At the end of the day, I'm the, con I'm the content creator. And if I create content that you guys enjoy, then that's great. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is, this is more about me emptying my notebook and my thoughts in video form. Almost like a vlog or a diary or something. So... Anyway, have a great everybody. Catch you later.